Hello, everyone. Welcome to Raw Hard and Real. I'm here today with a very special guest, Subsonic. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. And you? I'm pretty good. Hey, actually, uh, the first thing that I wanted to ask you is how was Fabric? Because I knew I know that you were here in Madrid like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, it was like three weeks ago. Yeah, oh, Fabric yeah, is exactly. Fabric is always good. I played it three or four times, but yeah, really enjoyed it. Okay, nice. Where else in Spain have you played? It's uh, I've played a lot of places. <laughs> Barcelona, I think. Um, uh, oh, I don't know. Uh, wait, let me find it. It's a club where they play a lot of hardstyle the last month. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I was there also like last year. Okay. Um, how can I find that? Uh, yeah, never mind. I can find it now. Okay, it's, don't worry. Uh, I flew to. Also near Madrid it was. So in okay, one. probably in Valencia, I, I would guess. Or no, no, like no, it was. No. No, I now want to know it. <laughs> I, uh, do you know Yafi Bus? Uh, no, no, I don't. He plays a lot. Wait, wait, wait. Nah, but don't worry it's about it. Mo Moradi, is it? Oh, it's okay. And it <laughs> yes, in... Central del Moradi. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I know. It's in Valencia. Valencia. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. in Valencia. Oh, yeah. yeah I played there like also last year. Okay, nice. And how did you like it? Because I have heard that the sound system there, it's pretty amazing. And the, that the place it's is pretty, pretty hard, cool as well. It's pretty hard, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it gives me like the, the old school rave vibe. Because everyone is enjoying the music. And it's not like in uh, like in the Netherlands. Germany, people are filming themselves. And it's about them. But I saw that club, it's more about the music and having fun. That was f cool to see. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, actually, that's what I like about the Spanish crowd. Like, for example, I'm from Mexico. Well, we're kind of like... But... <laughs> The Spanish crowd is pretty cool. Like they, I don't know, they're like more party goers, and and yeah, I mean the people in 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 the Netherlands, Germany, are like yeah, as you said, like more to to themselves, right? Yeah. And also, like in in, in fabric, it was like they, they get some messages on Instagram, but the the crowd was packed. But yeah, you never see them online. <laughs> yeah, that's so you, they only come for the party. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I love Fabric, by the way. I think it's one of the best places, uh, actually, like in, in Europe. Like, it's probably one of the best clubs for hard style. Yeah, 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 100%. And then now they're doing also big events. So uh, in June, they're doing a really big one. So I think they are now the biggest hard style club. Okay, yeah, 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 it is. Okay, now I, I'm going to start asking you some questions about yourself. And the first thing that I would like to, to know is how did you choose your artist name? Like where, where does Subsonic, the name, comes from? Um, yeah, when I started my career, I put on a list with names mm -hmm. and then, then like with 100 names and then choosing and uh, yeah, after <clears throat> then I will start watching online, like what's the best way to find a name? Like if you choose a name like uh, Potato, you can find the line. <laughs> but when you put it in, in, in not, not, I know it's a potato, but it was just an example, but if you put it yeah. there, you can find it. So it's like I'm a subsonic with a, with a K. So it's easy to find. Some people yeah. write it with, with a C, but yeah, that's, yeah, some people yeah. do that. But it, it's coming from supersonic. It's from like okay. a sound you uh, feel, but the, you cannot hear. Okay. Yeah. And actually using the K is something like a lot of hard style artists just uh, tend to do, right? I don't know why, but it's like just changing some of the of the letters about the names. And well, I, I think that it's also because it, it's easier, as you said, to, to find the artist. Yeah. yeah that, that's the reason why it's a K, yeah. And you started around nine years ago, something like that. And you know, eleven. Eleven. Wow. Okay. This, this is my uh, tenth year. Nice. Okay. And how yeah. did you start it? Like, what drew you to hard style? Uh, yeah, when I was young, some fr uh, friends showed me like hard style. <clears throat> they showed me artists like Hatton, just brand art. Then I thought, oh, this is really cool. This this really fits me. Then I went to some parties, and then I was like, yeah, I want to do this also myself. And from that point. <clears throat> yeah, I started uh, Subsonic. Okay, and how it has been like, uh, like chronologically speaking, you started and you started producing, or you started just playing at first, and how uh, it was it? I started start, uh, first started playing, and then I met a friend, and then we started Subsonic together. So uh, he was more the producing side, and I was more the DJ side. And after years, we grew together, and he is now not part anymore of Subsonic, and now I'm doing it alone. Okay, and how long ago was that? Uh, it was we split up like two years ago. Two years ago. Okay, so yeah. it's pretty recent. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah but it, 
No, I had it. It's not on every page, but uh, like uh, everyone knows it in the in the scene. But we are, uh, yeah, we started this, this together, and now uh, I'm doing it alone. Okay, and how do you feel about that? Like, is is it? I don't know. I, I think that I mean having someone else. It's good, and it could be like bad in both ways. Like, it's easier to to get like um, I don't know, probably a better sound because. You have someone to to check your song and to check the sounds yes. and everything. So I think that's that's better. But also, you're not allowed to have like your own sounds, right? Like uh, for example, I can think about maybe uh, Malice when Sick Mode went out and he started to get his own sound. So I think that uh, uh, that's the only like the the downside about having uh, someone else in. In your yeah, so we started like really together and we built the sound. We have like a big sound bank with kicks, leads, uh, every like a uh, signature sounds. And I'm still using it since we, we built it together. And now I'm using, I'm still using it. So that the Stiptronic sound will always be rec recognizable. Okay. Okay. Perfect. By the way, you have one of my favorite songs ever. Can you guess which one is it? It's, it's not, it's like four years old, kind of. Um... Four years old. I know. I have no idea. <laughs> it's music is my suicide. It's oh, actually, the rebellion. It, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And it's literally in my top three songs of all time. Which are the other two? Uh, I wouldn't actually know, like for sure. But one is uh, "Music Made Addict" from the Block and Stefan. And ah, uh, it's a tough question. Like I know those two, like yours and the Block and Stefan. And I don't know where I would put the the other one, but probably. I mean, I don't know which one would be the other one. It's a hard guess. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe... It has to be a uh, title with music in it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> okay, I have to think about one. <laughs> if someone... If, if some song came to mind, I will let you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and how old are you when, when you started? Uh, it was 11 years ago. I'm now 30. So I was 19. Okay, so you were pretty young. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, how is it growing in the Netherlands? Like, with all the hard style... Like, you see hardstyle everywhere because, I mean, I know that there are a lot of parties and, like, it's a big thing there. But how is it? Like, you can just find a party anywhere at any time uh, with hardstyle mm. on it? And uh, now it's a little bit less because <clears throat> yeah, not a lot of events got cancelled or stopped after Corona. But I think before okay. Corona, there was, like, in every... Especially in the summer, it was every weekend three or four parties. Like I, I had like uh, weekends that I played on like four or five events only in the Netherlands in one weekend. Holy shit, four or five events in one weekend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Now I play like one, one or two in a month. And but before Corona, it was really, really big. Okay, and so after Corona, have you been focusing more on the producing side? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but but would you, you were telling. I'm sorry, but you were telling me that that you're gonna you're working on an album right now, right? Yeah, I'm working on an album. It's almost finished, but yeah, I'm not sure when I'm gonna release it. It's okay. I told you that I had plans to do release it uh, around March, like now, or but yeah, I, I don't know yet. I'm not not uh, I'm not hyped yet. <clears throat> I really need like one or two tracks for which I think this is gonna be the album through uh, title songs, like I did with the first album, I did like uh, uh, the one. And ready for this? That were like the the two tracks which uh, uh, how do you say it? Like put a high level on it on the album. Okay. I I don't feel that I have one or two tracks of that now. So I'm now okay. looking for that. Okay, then it will be a surprise. So, but we're we're expecting it to be released this year, I guess. Maybe I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so for me, it's like uh, I'm I'm not. Uh, I want to give like a, a good product. Yeah, I want to focus on it. And uh, nowadays, really, there are a lot of albums, so you really have to stand out. So I rather wait some time than I push it. And yeah, yeah, that's true. And by the way, how is your creative process uh, when creating songs? Uh, yeah, most of the time, it's from something else, like a, an EDM song or a trap song, or <clears throat> or just some movies. Movies like I get inspiration from everything. So that's how it started, and I start building like a melody or building the ID, and from that you work for, uh, further. Okay, and what do you think that it's like the, the easier part up for you when creating a song? Like, what, yeah, what's easier for you? Uh, to have ID. I cannot okay. sit, sit like, uh, make something without, I really have to have the ID or have the, like a, a team or a melody 
then I can start up on music, but not just random stuff. Okay. And now that you were telling me that you had a partner, uh, do you enjoy more producing or playing live? More playing. I'm more the playing guy. Okay. And by the way, which has been your favorite event to play at? Um, like a festival or a club or... Tell me both. Like, I mean, it, it, it depends because you can actually have like a pretty good time uh, even in a small club, in a small club yeah. you know? Like you can connect with people and it can be a little bit different. So let let me know on both uh, on both. Or like uh, for a, for a festival, it is like uh, Defcon One, I think, mm -hmm. because it's like the, for me, it's like the, the the holy grail of hardstyle. Like if you're yeah. if you're a big hardstyle artist, you have to play there, and like everyone is going there. Like <clears throat> you have so, so many different styles. So it's a, and, and you meet like a lot of people who you never meet or like DJs who you only see, see online. That's also really fun. Yeah. And most of the time, if there are artists out there, then you meet the people and talk with people. And most of the time, you're going to party a bit also. So that's pretty fun. And I think playing in Australia, I played like on uh, Midnight Mafia. That was probably the, the coolest one. Okay. Yeah, I have heard a, good, a lot of good things about Australia. Yeah, people have. Yeah, they have told me that it's probably the best crowd. I don't know if that's true. Uh, yeah, yeah, the crowd is Chi, I think. Chi okay. Day. I played also. Oh, really? That's, that, that, that's the craziest crowd, I think. But like Australia is also like some uh, bucket listing. But okay. they're like playing on such a big venue with so many people. That you can see the end of the hall. That's yeah, amazing. Wow, and, and which has been like the craziest crowd? Uh, yeah, Chile, like, they're, Chile. Okay. Okay. they're yelling the whole set and know every track, and that's, they're even Holy waiting shit. for you outside your hotel when you're there, so it's really crazy. Wow, yeah, that must be nice. Yeah, I think it's because, also because, uh, for example, since I come back from Mexico, uh, I have seen that not a lot of artists go there, you know? So, oh. it, it's, it's like you... You, you don't get to see a uh, uh, hard sell art artist very often. So when the artist comes, you're like really excited and you have all these feelings. And yeah, I think like it, it's a really big thing. While here in Europe, it's like more, more crucial, you know, like we get yeah. to see it or at least I do know that I get to see most of the artists. At least my, I can see my favorite artists at least once a year here in Fabric, you know? Yeah, so, I, know, but like, I play like almost every year I play favorite. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So there's not like this level of expectation that people from other countries outside Europe um, are like, it. yeah, that they, they get really excited for. Yeah, that's 100% true. And it's fun to see for artists that people are really excited to see you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that must be really, really nice. And by the way, what's the best part for you of being a hard style DJ and artist? Uh, yeah, I really like drive and uh, I don't say it aggressive, but more like... Um, Explosive, like hard style is like like EDM is chill, but hard style it gives me a lot of energy. That's what, that is why I really like hard style. And before you start this, <clears throat> what kind of music did you use to to listen to? All the, only EDM and hard style, or other yeah. genres? Yeah. Okay. EDM, yeah. Okay. I didn't don't even know that it called EDM. That it, I think it was house more. Yeah. Okay. That, yeah. That's also a problem yeah. for me. Well, like. <laughs> I have I don't I don't ever know I, I always say EDM but I do know that it's a uh, head tech house and progressive house and yeah, yeah. Kind of names which I never know which I also like rap music I listen to a lot of things rap music oh really and what I what was really young was like the, the Anger Fist re uh, mixes Anger Fist mega mix from uh, 2008 or 2009 yeah that's, that was that was really that was already uh, makes me. Uh, uh, that I want to more about the, the hard stuff, like the, the, the hardcore, hard style. Always when you hear something like that, they're like, oh, this is cool. I want yeah. to know more about it. Okay. By the way, which artist inspired you? Uh, Bernhard. One of the first artists where I looked up to. Okay. Yeah, it's really cool. Okay. Yeah. I think that maybe Imaginary is my third song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's no, <laughs> there's no music in it, but I, I, I know. it's a great. I, I would think about it. Anyway. <laughs> Any other song with music in it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, people are like uh, hating when it's, it's co Bret Hart's commercial and stuff like that. But the commercial sh uh, music breaks doors open for the rest of the artists. Exactly, like, yeah. Same way to I... lose, lose your mind, uh, head to the yeah. with They're like, oh, they're on the radio. But more people get to know art style. There's more money involved. So the art style people can 
people can do more. We travel around the world to share art style with everyone, so I don't see it as a bad point. Yeah, the song is maybe a bit cheesy, but I enjoy poppy art style also a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's not like... You can just choose one kind of hard style or maybe just hard style or euphoric between raw. I, I always say that I love like all the genres that, that are um, like inside the hard genre. Uh, like I love euphoric. I love raw. I love I love hardcore. I kind of like up tempo. <laughs> but, you know, it's like uh, I do enjoy like all these parts that, that the hard music has. And I, I think the same uh, as, as you like. If it wasn't for these kind of songs, like the genre would be like completely unknown. These yeah. songs are the ones that uh, are like, yeah, like the, the bridge between the, the people that doesn't listen to art. So maybe are listening to, to EDM or whatever genre you want to, whatever art genre. Uh, so I think that it's really important for these songs to exist. And also these are songs that I think that are really transcendent. Uh, because they, I can still listen to, for example, Imaginary, Lose, Lose My Mind, uh, and I still really enjoy them. And some of the songs that are released nowadays don't have like this this impact in in our lives. They are like just temporary. Yeah, that's, that's what I feel nowadays a lot. Like a lot of tracks are produced for or really art or gimmick, but not like in the past or a lot of numbered feelings. Uh, I think the tracks which are now made are not going to be classics in the future. If you know exactly. what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I, I, think, you, but... yeah I, I feel the same. And it's weird because I love, for example, I, I, I don't dislike these songs. Like, I actually love a lot of them. But the, the thing is that they are really temporary. Like, I don't know, maybe some songs, I won't, I, I won't name artists, but so, there are some tracks that I do love. But after two or three months, I know that I will never listen to those tracks again. They don't have like this feeling and this hey, thing okay. that yeah yeah, so I, yeah and that's why I think that for example uh, I, I always like to 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 talk about uh, Headhunters because he releases like one song every year <laughs> but his song always becomes like the best like the top song you know of yeah. the year and it's because there's a lot of feeling a lot of passion and a lot of effort put into that song and that's why I think that um, he has like this impact and. Not a lot of artists are doing this anymore. They are like just focusing on the kicks and to make it harder, which I love. That's the thing. I love that. Yeah. But I think that we are losing like, yeah, all the, yeah, the feelings uh, and the transcendence and thinking about how the song is going to impact the people and like, you know, in into their lives. Yeah, that's but like you said, the, the, there's no uh, connection with it. Like with the imaginary, you got like, <clears throat> it's a bit, bit romantic stuff. You got more feeling with it, with the music which are, is made nowadays. The feeling is a bit gone, <clears throat> and you don't make memories on it. You don't make a memory that you are uh, club long on music with someone together. Yeah, it's not really a memory. It's more like a uh, feeling you have to have with a number. Yeah, I think that they, they are like just probably, uh, which is good. I mean, I, I'm not going to criticize it because, as I said, I like it, but they're just made to, to be good at the dance floor. And yeah. then... After the dance floor, you're not going to remember that song. So, yeah, no. it's, I don't know. I mean, as I said, I do like it, but I think that, and I, I actually think that uh, the melodic side of hard style is going to return pretty soon because yeah, yeah. we're, we're like just hitting the roof. Like, I don't think that it can be any harder. I thought that also some years ago, I was like really the, the raw guy. I was like one of the hardest and I was one of the softest. So... <laughs> They're going fast, harder and harder, but for me, for, in my opinion, I don't really love the art stuff. Sometimes there's something cool between it, but for me, it's going too hard. So I'm going also with more melodic, more poppy. I want uh, more feeling and more uh, uh, the feeling to, of together to create it. Yeah, yeah and actually what, what I do like a lot about you is that you are like, you, you always have your style and you haven't been trying to... To get to the trendy part of of hard oh. nowadays, which is really cool because you know that those artists are the ones that remain authentic, and I I think that that's pretty cool about you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, that, that, that's, I do what I love, and uh, I'm not gonna make music to please the crowds. I make music to please myself, and of course, I make music to share with people. But I want to like it, and if I don't like it, I won't release it. Or <clears throat> that that's how I think. And like what you said, I can do like the the, the tempo hype or... Of course, I, I made it like a tempo track, but it's not my core music. I, my core yeah. music is like hardstyle, 
raw art style and sometimes uh, going faster, sometimes slower, but I always keep the subtronic signature sound. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's really important nowadays because with all these artists coming out, which a lot of of them are quite good, uh, it's kind of difficult to distinguish like between artists nowadays and mostly on, on the raw specter uh, because... I think that a lot of artists tend to sound kind of alike, and you know, it's it, for me. I think that it's more uh, more difficult nowadays to to have a distinguished sound. It, it, it's, re- it's really difficult to make an old sound. Like uh, you have to work years on that. But <clears throat> they also like he's the new Vertical Redemption. Where he's the new Headhunters. But in, you don't need to be a new one. You have to be your new your, yourself, exactly. your own sound. And if you are making a good sound, people will all like that, and it will go. Uh, go. Um, it will come, but people are, all, are also copying stuff from each other. And sometimes, sometimes I see, it, uh, listen to a track, and I hear from which track the track is taken because it's the same elements, same the way of kicks. That's yeah. For me, the creative process is not like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to yeah to come up with your with your sound. And by the way, which ones are your favorite songs? For myself. Yeah, yeah. Or again, in general. No, no, no. From yourself, from yourself. Like, would um, what, like, but wait. How would you describe yourself with three songs of your own? Like, yeah, like if someone doesn't know you, which I think it's but it's almost impossible. But if someone doesn't know you, which tracks would you recommend about yourself? Uh, bring it on, ready for this, and the one. I mean, maybe instead of the one, uh, sandstorm. That's okay, okay nice. Like okay. sandstorm, that should be the, the big breakthrough. Like uh, YouTube is. 5 million streams or something and now it's also on uh, spotify it's al- also 1 million in like some months so i think everyone knows me from that track and it was funny when lo- the track was like one year old mm-hmm. when i walk- walked over defcon every stage i was playing it that was really funny <laughs> nice yeah now, yeah, na- yeah. now, now we have activation from uh, a version which will be played everywhere that was the track so that was really fun <laughs> yeah i mean it's a really great song thank you yeah and um, what what about the songs that you like from other artists? Like I, I just told you my my top three songs. Which ones will be, will be yours? Ooh, it's a difficult one. I don't think I have like a, a top. There are some songs I like, but I don't have like a top three. Uh, but one the first ones that maybe come to mind, because for example, when I say that, I can think about some songs like, you know, like I, I just said. And yeah, but maybe tomorrow I will change one, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm more artist wise. Like some artists, but like for Brand Arts, Randy, yeah. Art Driver, every track they make, I like. I think it's more like <clears throat> maybe Randy for the moment is well, which, the track which I like a lot. Yeah. Because that's so, so much feeling in it. And production wise, it's like an 11. You can do it better, I think. Um, and for the rest, I don't know. There's so, so much music I like. Yeah. And which artists are like. The ones that you that you are friends with or that you hang along with. Um, I just had a call with Korsakov, so maybe uh, okay. he's uh, really close to me. Uh, Demi Cannon lives really close to me, so we talk a lot. Aftershock is a good friend of mine. Um, yeah, that was it, I think. Okay, and do you actually like? I don't know. Uh, get together and you maybe send him your stuff to to, yeah, to yeah, give yeah, some yeah. feedback, get some yeah. feedback, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, nice. With Korskov, I have more like a private relationship, but with Demi Kanon and F. Shok, I'm more sending stuff, yeah. And feedback, and they help me sometimes. And do you see yourself performing and producing for the rest of your life? Good question. Um, no, I don't think so. Okay, why? Um, yeah, like I did a lot of things. I, I made like a bucket li- nice uh, cup, uh, by the way. Uh, I made like, when I started with Subsonic, I made like a bucket list. And uh, I did everything with what I wanted. Uh, so I now make a new one. But I see for myself, like, uh, for me, it's okay. I don't do music and I'm playing and I don't want to be on the top level, which I was before. I just want to make music and play three, four times in a month. Yeah, like, but I, what I already told in the start, like I did some five shows in a weekend. That was not okay. And I don't want it anymore. I mean, that must be really stressful. And well, actually, the, the worst part about being an artist, from what I have been told, is that like having a lot of uh, a lot of gigs in a small yeah. amount of time, it's like hell because you cannot sleep and it's yeah. like traveling a lot. And people usually think that, oh my God, it's so cool because artists are traveling a lot. But 
Actually, it's on the contrary. It's like you don't have time for yourself. You don't even get to see the places. Yeah, like people ask me, uh, I was I was Spain. So yeah, now, like this time I was in. I went. To, uh, I took the early flight to France. We went to Madrid. We went to the uh, the, uh, the palace. Royal uh, 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 palace. Yeah, and yeah. we went to the city and have some uh, tapas and stuff. So, yeah. Nice. Some sometimes if you go to the people ask you, how was uh, Germany? So, yeah, I saw the the the, the airport, the, the ride to the air to the hotel, hotel club, hotel back. So you've been there like one one night, and you don't see don't see anything. Yeah, it's also something it, I regret that I didn't enjoy it that much. Yeah, but I mean it's I don't know, it's really hard when you have like this tight schedule. So yeah, but now I mean right now, as you said, uh, in Spain you could uh, get more time and do whatever you wanted. Yeah. By the way. Uh, how did you like it? Like it, you were here in Madrid before, but this was the first time that you had to spend time here, or or it before you you already had time to. Uh, yeah, it was once in Madrid also that I went a little bit in the city, but now I took a friend who has already been to Madrid some time, so he showed me the the cool places. Nice. Went for shopping and stuff, so uh, that's that was fun. But normally okay. I don't do that stuff. <laughs> I stayed I stayed in, maybe you know it at the Hotel Puerta America. And it's it's out it's outside of the center. It's like a twenty minutes drive from the, the center of Madrid. Oh, okay. No, then I don't know it because I I actually live like in the city center. So oh, next okay. time that next time that you come, if you want some suggestions about restaurants or anything, or maybe places for tapas, I am your yeah. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> yeah, I have some friends living in Madrid, so they are also uh, request uh, show me some uh, good spots. It was really good. I really like the the ham there, like the Iberia yeah. ham and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, really nice. I mean, it's really good. And but when 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 you go to play to, at at venues or whatever, do you usually party while while being there, or you're more of a, kind of a quiet guy? Uh, both. Depends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I just go there, play, and go back to the hotel and sleep. Sometimes, when it's more like when you're alone. Yeah, a bit boring. I meet a lot of places where you go at your own. You don't know anyone. So yeah, you are there sitting, playing, and you go back. But like in fabric, I was there two hours before my set. I had some beers, some drinks, watched some other sets. And two hours later, I went up to the hotel. But I, nice. but, but I watched some other sets and stuff. So sometimes I go for some drinks. But like partying, not anymore. I don't okay. go for that. <laughs> no, no, no. That's not true because I'm 36 and I still party. <laughs> yeah, but like when you every week get away and you see a lot of clubs, you... So... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah, it's different. And by the way, have you attended uh, some festivals as a guest, like not playing at the festival? And if you you have, which ones have been your favorite? Or even if you haven't, like from your point of view uh, as a guest, what are the best festivals that you would recommend for people to to go to? Uh, yeah, I'm going by myself now to some techno uh, parties, like hard nice. techno. If you know for clipped, it's like yeah, 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 yeah. I know it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I've been there in the, some months ago with friends, and nice. now we are planning to go to another festival in the Netherlands. But for me, that going to uh, partying just with friends and going somewhere like for me, Defcon is not that fun because everyone want to take a picture or want something from you. You don't have really time for your friends, but you go like a party where you're not that famous. Yeah, it's famous there, but not that famous as on a hardstyle party. So we can party with all the friends. It's pretty fun. In the Netherlands parties, I really like. I like Mysteryland. Okay, it's really big and play there. I never play there, but would would love to play there, but never booked me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, went there as a as a guest, and yeah, that's really f- never been to Tomorrowland. Maybe that's also something I really want. But okay, you have to because I have been yeah. there and it's pretty cool. I mean, from it's a, it's on my biggest list now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you should and like not not from the heart the hard uh, side of it because it, I mean it has always like hard style and hardcore like every day but the organization there the logistics like how beautiful everything is made is pretty impressive like I, I really love it I think it's probably the best festival in the world yeah. um, thinking about that and it's actually can, can you can you believe that Defcon 1 is more expensive inside than Tomorrowland didn't know that man yeah, yeah, like well, always I always think about beers, and the beers are more expensive <laughs> at Defcon One that uh, that in Tomorrowland. So you have to go to Tomorrowland, but tickets are more expensive for Tomorrowland, right? So yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, but not but the expensive end, anymore. Yeah, exactly. Like I think that Tomorrowland maybe it's 
380 or something like that, like the cheapest one. And uh, DEFCON 1, it's 290. So it's getting it's getting there, the price from DEFCON 1. Yeah. I think that's the only downside right now from, from DEFCON. But everything else, it's really, really, really cool. Yeah, yeah. for me, DEFCON is one of the highlights of the year. Yeah. Also, Decibel is really cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. By the way, in these years of your career, which year do you appreciate the most? Um... Yeah, the year before Corona, I think. Like, uh, no, I think the year uh, after my oh, first album, like Strike One, that was for me like the first year where it was like booming. <clears throat> did, a lot of, did a lot of shows, did a lot of stuff, did the album. So it was really fun to do. Uh, okay. Do you have any memor- memorable or fun experiences with a fan during an event? Uh, some people are crying sometimes when they met me. So it's a, that's a, re- a bit strange, a bit awkward, but it's, it's funny. To, for me, I'm really, really uh, yeah, I would never cry to meet someone, but for me, it's, it's, how do you say it? It's an honor, like, the people really seeing me like that. Because I don't see yeah. myself like that. Yeah, yeah, I have never thought about that, because then, I mean, I have been really excited about getting to know uh, some people, but still, like, getting to cry? <laughs> I think, yeah. it's like, wow. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, but being an artist, it must be, wow, like, mind-blowing, right? How do you mean? Mind blowing, like it's a mind blowing experience when someone is crying. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's crazy. It's like like yeah, yeah. That I think that that's more dodgy. That yeah, we it's like in the Netherlands. You also not uh, um, how do you say it? Like when you walk in, like if I would love walk in Chile or something, people are going with a picture and stuff. And the Netherlands you don't have that that much. You have more yeah. people are more chill and. Every famous artist almost lives in the Netherlands, so it's not that, that special anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 that's true. Yeah, uh, that, I mean, that, that's what, like, we, we talked uh, before, like, on Chile or maybe some other countries that are far away. It's, yeah, it's more impressive to, yeah. to get to know an artist that, 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 live in, that lives in Europe. Uh, okay, what advice would you give to someone starting their career as a hard sell DJ or producer? Just do it. Just do things, try things, uh, talk with people, and <clears throat> oh yeah, just go on your feeling. This is, this is what I always did. If I want something, I did everything to to make it happen. And if if one someone says no, I'm gonna work two times harder to make it yes. That's a, that's yeah. I think the most important thing. Okay. Uh, what's your opinion on the evolution of hard style over the years? Um, yeah, for me now it's too hard. Like I'm, mi- I'm missing more like like the family feeling. I see like with the deathcore artist from Soundress, I mm-hmm. feel that feeling is more like a celebration together. And with a lot of music nowadays, it's more like going hard, going as hard as possible with the tempo kicks, sad kicks. You can name it, but yeah, that's not not my, not my cup of tea. I think it's, I'm going to more. I'm going to focus more on music to celebrate together and have a more meaningful. Yeah, and by the way, I, I have seen that, that there are more and more events in the Netherlands, uh, like focusing on euphoric, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I think that's cool. It was almost gone, like, I think one or two years before there were no euphoric parties anymore. Even on the big stage, like the Dance Festival was like the first three or four artists were euphoric, Defcon the same, but now it's one or two, or even no. So that the euphoric scene was dance, but it's cool to see that they're coming back. But also... Maybe because they changed a bit for for their style. Because like two, three years ago, it was every track was no stone track, same kicks, same sound design, and now they are changing a lot in the euphoric scene. So that's also cool to see. Yeah, yeah, because it sounds. I mean, I think that every genre has to evolve. Like yeah. you cannot stay sounding exactly the same like you were ten years ago. This is like something natural in music. But uh, I, I, for example, I I like listening to the new euphoric. All this sound design, I uh, like it. All these new kicks, like not, not, I mean, and as I said, I, I do love like old songs, but it's good to see like this evolution. Like you, you don't, you cannot stay uh, like in the past because yeah, yeah. music evolves and every artist has to evolve with it. Yeah, but the euphoric scene evolves a lot with new kicks. Like uh, when I saw, when I told like in some years ago, everyone sounds the same. And that's where yeah. people get, that's, that's, I think that's now happening with the raw scene. Like every artist sounds the same, the same kicks. I was yeah. doing sa- sa- kicks and it's not that special anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, th- yeah, that's a thing. For example, uh, that's what I actually don't really love about Top Tempo, that I think that I'm listening to the same two kind of kicks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, it just, 
<laughs> and it's like, okay, but to work, I don't know. I want something else, you know, yeah, like yeah. something different. I mean, I do like it, but I cannot, I, maybe I can stand just one set from up tempo. What I do like is, for example, when uh, the artists end their set with, uh, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes of tempo. I think that that's yeah. pretty cool. But like, I don't know, maybe going to a whole festival uh, with up tempo might be too much for me. <laughs> Also for me, I won't, I won't do that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is the set or song that you enjoyed creating uh, or performing live the most? Uh, yeah, which track I like the most is like Bring It On with Rebellion. <clears throat> I think it's, for me, it's like the, the perfect arrangement of the track. The mid, the mid intro is like really banging, really hard screeches, a lot of elements. And the break is really uh, euphoric, uh, a bit like a, ch a chore, like people are uh, hyped up for the break. And the build-up vocal with the rap, then the drop is really melodic, but really hard. And then you got the last drop, it's like a, the empty drop, also really hard. So yeah, I think that's the, for me. It's like the perfect track. And which which artist is the one that you have collaborated the most with? Uh, I think Sub Zero Projects. I think okay. And, it, and it three three tracks for them. Okay. And uh, yeah, I think that I don't know how, like what uh, I don't know how to say this like on on a percentage. Like how many of your songs have been collapsed? Because I, I think that's a pretty cool thing uh, nowadays that I see that a lot of artists have collapsed between each other and you, you actually have a lot. So do you yeah. actually enjoy more doing the songs by yourself or making collabs? I enjoy collabs more. Uh, it's fun to go with it, so to work some. <clears throat> you have so like two creative minds together to create something unique. I think I did a track with uh, Basic Machina. Maybe you heard it. The last one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we worked together on it. I sent it first the ID, and then he worked further on it. And then I went to his studio, and we, yeah, fixed it together. The last uh, parts, but it is the, the process is yeah, it's more fun because you have more elements, more inspiration. That, that that's what I really like. Yeah, and you have more brains, and you. I don't know. I think that yeah. you can polish more than like like you have a you can have a more polished song. So yeah, I think it, it might. Yeah, be more different. more. Yeah, ideas like yeah. <clears throat> when you make music, you do the same tricks, the same, uh, you do everything the same. And when you work with someone together, you, you learn new techniques, you learn more stuff. Yeah. It's also more fun from collab. And by the way, what uh, what DAW does most artists use? Like, do you use FL Studio? Or... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. And most artists, more art style artists use FL Studio? Uh, yeah, the most, I think, yeah. Okay, like, so then at least you should say it's. Uh, only the only the big artists don't use it, I think. Okay. okay. Like a brand arts, Randy, uh, Headhunters, Wasouts, they always all, all use another one. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, but it's more like uh, it's same with the kitchen. It doesn't matter which kitchen you're using, it's how you yeah. use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's completely true. What challenge do you face when trying to maintain authenticity in your music? Um, yeah, to create something new. You know what I mean? I, do, I have the signature symphonic sign sound, which I will always have. But people also want to hear something new. So I have to make like a blend from new sounds, new techniques. Uh, but it also it needs to be subsonic. I think that's the most difficult part. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm about to, to finish. I will just uh, ask you like... I don't know, like five more so five more questions. Yeah, how true. do you see the how do you see the future of hard style? Um, difficult one. <laughs> I actually thought about it. I think a lot of things will change. It will. I think it will be more euphoric, more uh, melodic. I think. Then you think that it would be kind of like raw melodic? Like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, because I don't think that it would just come back to to euphoric. I think that it will kind of get blended with raw and yeah. something new will come or maybe with up tempo i don't know uh but i think that something fresh might come soon because as i said i think that we're just like hitting a wall like we cannot go any harder and yeah, yeah. that's why i think that something new or fresh might come and i don't know I, i'm pretty pretty excited to see what's coming because i think that it will come pretty soon because i don't think that we can play well i mean there can be like harder sounds than the ones that exist right now, or maybe it, they will. Everyone will prove me wrong. <laughs> and we will yeah, I, just, I, I think it will merge with more hard techno. I think hard style. Okay, yeah, T yeah, yeah. TNT and stuff like that. I think that will be merged in. I think in a sub genre maybe. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I like that the most at the moment, like hard techno with early with TT stuff. I think. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I do enjoy a lot hard techno as well. 
I've been to just one festival, but I really loved it. And yeah, yeah as you said, it, and it has a lot of elements from early hard style, raw. It, it's like just a mix of a yeah. lot of hard genres. Uh, do you have any rituals or lucky charms that you always carry with you at events? Or do you have, yeah, like something that you do before you're going to play? No, nothing. No? No, no I'm, not, I'm not even nervous. People ask me a lot, are you nervous? I say, no, I'm not nervous. I think I'm more nervous to talk with you than I'm playing for 10,000 people. <laughs> Yeah, it's, for me, it's I do it for ten years, so I know how the DJ set works. I, I know what I want to play, so it's for me, it's yeah. not that difficult. Actually, what some artists have told me is that they do not get nervous anymore, but they they have k kind of have the same feeling, but it's from excitement instead of of getting nervous. Like they they switch it from <laughs> from being nervous to get really really excited when they're gonna play. Yeah, I mean, of, co of course I'm excited. I'm not, uh, yeah. uh, but I'm not feeling that I'm gonna be sick or something or. Nervous or scared or something? No. Yeah. Uh, do you have any exciting projects or collaborations uh, that are coming soon? Um, yeah, I'm working on some collabs and a lot of. <clears throat> I work on some covers also. So uh, I, I I have uh, around 20 tracks now ready. So I'm gonna release them now every month. I gotta do an official remix from Don't Touch the Stereo. Maybe you know that one. That, that that's really excited. Because I'm playing it for already seven or eight years, and it never got an official release. And now the original owner gave me permission, so that's nice. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> that that's pretty tough to to get right. Like some, yeah, sometimes yeah. getting the yeah the owner to to give the rights yeah. to use the song. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited yeah. about that. I still have, need yeah. to have a date because I'm all waiting for three or four months on a date. But he, he gave me permission, so it'll okay. go. Hey, hey, by the way, how do you set your release date? Because I think that, that I, I have never understood that, <laughs> but I don't know if like uh, the label is the one that gives you the dates or you can tell them like, okay, I would like to, to set the date for this. How does it work? Uh, I just set a track to Dirty Words and ask them, when do you have a place? So they they, the and that... they saying uh, this date, we have uh, a spot free. So I, and then I check, okay, I'm okay, do that. That's how I work. Like with the album, you really push a date. Like uh, I want to do that all data album. But with solo release, I just... Now I'm saying, pop, uh, and we track before DEFCON, I said, yeah, I want to release a track around DEFCON. And then I got to pick a date around that event. Okay. And by the way, how, how long have you been with Dirty Works? Three years, four years. I don't know. It was before Corona. I think it's four years, I think. Okay. Hey. Yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, so uh, for me, uh, Dirty Works is one of the biggest labels in the hard style. So yeah, I'm yeah, really nice. happy to be there. Yeah, I think that it's the biggest one for all, for hard style and the, yeah. like, actually hard stuff because if you go to raw or other, and other genres i mean scumfax is big as well but yeah i think that dirty work the dirty works at least for my perspective from my perspective it's like the the biggest one yeah yeah and have the biggest uh playlist in spotify the biggest yeah. YouTube channel so yeah they, they are and they, they really doing it really well with support and yeah when i set a track they never say no it's not good or no i don't want it it's always yes let's go that's what I really like about Dirty Works. Nice. Kudos to Dirty Works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Okay. So, Ilmar, I'm just going to ask you the last question. And it's my favorite one. How would you like to be remembered in the hard style scene? Um, yeah, for the tracks and performance, I, which I did. Like with uh, Supremacy, the first Supremacy or like Def Con. I think uh, people need to remember that. Or the music, like... For me, it's uh, my music uh, collection is like my legacy. I'm doing it now. When I'm gone, people can still listen to it and it will continue in the eternity. That's the thing people will, yeah, that's what people are going to remember. That's, oh, that, that also make me a little, little bit proud or something that people, when I'm gone, it will be still existing in Subtronic. Okay, perfect. You know what? The only thing that made me sad today is that you didn't mention my favorite song in in your favorite songs of, from yourself. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, yeah, it's not even in the top five of my favorite songs. Really? Um, it, it was also almost cancelled the song because some other artists used the same vocals. So, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, like, that, uh, that's... detox used it also. It's from a sample pack. Okay, fuck. Then uh, you know, yeah, we're like dropping like, are we gonna release it? Yes or no? Then I said, yeah, let's do it. And they said, okay, let's do it. And we did. Uh, now it's your favorite. So. <laughs> but it's yeah, also yeah. difficult. Like I did, so, I think I'm, I, I never count them, but I think I have more than 500 tracks already released or something. Okay. So it's really, really difficult. Some are like my favorite, like Bring It On, Ready For This, The One. We've also some other, which I really like. 
but never, yeah, it's a big list. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, at least you, you now know that that song uh, really got in someone. I, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so you're the okay. one who, who's listening it every day. Huh? You are the one who's listening it, listening it every day. Exactly. Yeah, thank you. No, 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 no problem. Thank you for creating that song. <laughs> okay, Omar, uh, thank you very much for, for your time. I, I did really enjoy it. I hope that you enjoy it as well. Yeah, it was cool. I never do, do interviews like this. I'm also not a really big interview guy, so you, uh, you have a special one. But it was cool. It was funny. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I hope to see you soon. Maybe, uh, I don't know, are you playing at Nexus here in Fabric no, or not? No. Okay. Well, then maybe at DEF CON 1 I will be there. So no, I'll no, just no, send no, you a beer? message. Yeah, exactly. So I, will, uh, I will give you one beer. Okay. So it's right. so expensive. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I'm just going to tell you, uh, I'm just going to say this. But at DEF CON 1, I spent around a thousand euros on, I mean, not just beer, like beer and food. But the food oh. is like the minimum. I, I was yeah. crazy. Like, I, I went out of my mind. I was just drinking beer all the time. I was like... Then go, go on. I had like I have like these German jeans and I just need to drink beer all the time and it was it was fucking crazy. Are you sure are you sure you're a Mexican or <laughs> No, I actually I am actually half German, so yeah, oh, the, the German the German jeans are true. Um... <laughs> yeah. Ilmar, again, thank you very much for your time. Uh, no I will I will hopefully see you at Defcon One. I will be waiting for that beer. <laughs> yeah, I will give you one. Thank you. I'll see you later, man. Thank you, and thanks everyone for watching, and please subscribe to my channel.